On today's episode, we will talk about my continued sweater knit, my pastel fade sweater, as well as a finished weaving project. This is Pineapple Knits. This is my channel dedicated to knitting, spinning, and weaving. You can connect with me on social media at Pineapple Yarn, and you can visit me on my website at pineappleyarn.com. Thank you so much for joining me again this week, and I am so happy that you have taken some time to spend with me. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. I'm coming to you from coastal South Carolina. We are experiencing great spring weather, just warms, cools, storms. I love it. It's just a mix of all the things, and it's gradually getting warmer, so I'm a happy person here. <laughs> I'm continuing to burn my royal palm candle. It is an awesome blend of a little bit of floral, a little bit of citrus, a little bit of coconut. It's just, it's super tropical and it's great if you love spring weather, if you love warm weather, it's an awesome scent. <laughs> and I also have my 2019 advent calendar right here on my mannequin and it is knit up into the banana leaf shawl by Yuki Ueda. I have had this on the mannequin for several weeks now because I love it. I love the way it looks. And I'm also wearing my 2020 advent calendar. This was called Vitamin C and I wove this on my Kromsky loom and it was just, it's so fun. It's a gorgeous fade. Let me show you just in case you haven't seen it. <laughs> So I warped this loom with all of my minis. I dyed this uh, advent calendar last year. I dyed these up as a gradient or a fade. And so how you would work with these is you started here, this was day one. And as you worked your way through the 24 days, you ended up with this beautiful color fade, or I guess it's not, technically a gradient, but it ended up being so, so pretty. And this is muted in this project because I wove it with a undyed strand of merino nylon yarn. And so um, it really muted down the colors and it just, it was very, very pretty. So I really loved how that turned out last year. And then the ends, I love the ends on this because I did twisted fringe. And so they just turned out so, so pretty and all the colors together, just they're just gorgeous. And I did record a video, I don't know if I've put it on this channel or not, but I did record a video um, of of when I did these actually. I'm wearing this today, it's just super cheerful and bright and it's just, uh, it's perfect during spring weather. All right, let's jump into my first project, which is my pastel fade sweater. This is a sweater for my daughter. I'm knitting the size eight and I'm using a pattern by Katherine McMillan and I think it's called the Kids Basic Raglan Sweater. I had it in my Ravelry library and I think I think it's free on Ravelry, but I'll link below so you can check in case you're interested. But here's where I am so far. So I think it's turning out so cute. And I know last week I ended off on, I hadn't finished the body yet, and I still haven't finished the body, but I was thinking of putting a yellow skein of yarn to continue this fade. And I wasn't exactly sure if it, no, I said that it would work. <laughs> I'm pretty sure on the last episode, I was very confident that it would work. You know what's so funny though, is I went and actually measured my daughter and I didn't need to add any more length to the body. It was long enough. So the yellow yarn didn't even get to be tested. And so that's that, but when I got to the sleeve, so I have finished one sleeve. And when I got to the sleeve and I started measuring, 
I realized I did need more length. And so I went back to my original picture that I had taken of all the skeins of yarn lying next to each other. And I'll put a photo here. This is, there are several skeins that I actually eliminated, the darker blue ones. It just wasn't, uh, when I caked them up, I realized that it just wasn't in the same mood, <laughs> I guess, of all of these yarns. And so I went back because I noticed I had, after the yellow skein, which was second to last, the last skein of yarn was a brighter kind of peachy pink. And I thought, I didn't even remember putting that in this fade. <laughs> and so instead of the yellow on the sleeves, I actually added that darker pink. And here it is by itself. And I don't even, I, hopefully you can see how dark that is. This is what I had ended up with originally. And then I paired this one with it. And so I went from these two into this one. And it's turned out really, really nice. The yarn management on this project is a little frustrating. <laughs> it's really not that bad, but when you are, I'm knitting two inches per color and there are nine different colors in this at this point. And so it's making an amazing fade. It's so gorgeous. I, I love where this project's going, but just as far as knitting, um, it's a little, the yarn management's a little tricky because there's so many ends, there's so many little cakes of yarn to be managing. So just a heads up, if you're just not into that right now, which I get it, <laughs> I maybe wouldn't do a fade like this. I don't wanna discourage you, but I know sometimes we just need to pick up some yarn and knit and not have to think about anything. And sometimes, yeah, I think that's probably what I'll need after this, to be honest, but I think it's turning out super cute. So anyway, all of these yarns are from either my Glow Club or my Sun Club from 2020, with the exception of three colorways, which I don't, I do have one. This is Hazy Sunrise. This is a very, very pale, clear color that I do stock in the shop. It's a very pale, very, very clear. It has very clear, sharp colors, but they're pale. It's very pretty. And then the next one I have is Little Paper Umbrellas, and it's one of my original colorways. It is such a pretty color. It has mint and green and speckles and yellow and pinks. It's very, very pretty. And I'm trying to think if I had any other colorways. I know I will list them down below. You can check that out if you're interested. But I had, um, I pretty consistently in 2020 dyed uh, samples, 50 gram samples of all of my club colorways. And they just all worked out for a fade, which was super fun. So I'm loving where this is going so far. I am, I'm about halfway done with this sleeve. So that's turning out really great. The next step, on this project is to figure out what color I'm going to use for all of the trim on this sweater. So I will need to add the neck binding. I will steek the sweater and add the um, button band. I need trim for the bottom, a rib. I need a rib for the sleeves. So all of those things, I'm not really sure. I could use a natural color, like an undyed color I could use my colorway pearl that is in my shop and I actually, it's a very, very pale, pale gray. It's a, such a pretty color. That would look really pretty with this. So I'm not sure. I was thinking pale peach, but 
the pale peach would be up here on the neckline and I'm not sure if I want pale peach with this bright kind of turquoisey green color. So anyway, if you have any opinions, let me know. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to mention with this sleeve is that I knit it straight down. I did not put any decreases in it. And what I did is I added all the decreases at the very last round. And so once the rib is put in or the cuff, the ribbed cuff, I think it'll be kind of a cute, um, it'll give it a little bit of a ruffle at the bottom. These sleeves are not huge, they're not oversized sleeves, but I think it'll be really pretty. Just a nice little detail. And so that is that on that sweater. I have actually been knitting quite a, I've been doing pretty well, I've had good progress on it, so hopefully I'll have quite a bit to show you next week but I wanna share with you my finished weaving project. So it's off the loom, it's not completely finished, and let me get it to share with you. So here is the finished weaving project. Well, let me show you a photo first. <laughs> I shared with you uh, with the warp on the loom and uh, the mohair that I was using for the weft. So this is what it looked like in progress. And here's what it looks like now. The weaving part's finished, but I haven't blocked it or finished the ends. So it turned out very, very sheer, as you can see, which is the effect I wanted. It's super lightweight. It's super drapey. I mean, it's very, very pretty. The hand of the fabric is gorgeous. It's it feels so nice. It's really nice. So just as a quick recap for those who might have missed, I used as the warp, I used a fingering weight um, superwash merino nylon. It is my Lonnie sock base and it was contained in the set called Moody Peacock. And so let me go ahead and show you these ends and you can see. I think I do have a couple of these in the shop right now, but it was just all these beautiful kind of jewel tone, moody, dark shades. And then what I did is I paired a skein of mohair in this um, colorway I had in the shop a couple years ago. It was called Pale Mauve, and I just had a skein of it around. And I think, I wanna say this middle, if you can see that middle, stripe right there looks very, very close to the actual color of the mohair. But with the mohair, it's just really lightened up the whole, like all the colors, as you can see. And so it was a very challenging weave. Um, what I did is I wove it on a, I think it was an eight ends per inch heddle. What that means is literally there's eight ends of yarn per inch. <laughs> so um, that's a really good size to use for maybe a DK or thicker yarn if you want a more of a solid fabric. I usually use, yeah, I usually use that for a DK. I think I use an eight. Um, and so it's, it's good for thicker. So when you put a thinner yarn, like a fingering weight yarn, and you weave with that, it's going to just be a drapier type fabric because you have more space in between all of your yarn. Um, and so what I did is I kind of echoed that same spacing with the weft when I was weaving with the mohair. And so I didn't beat firmly. I beat very, very loosely. And that's where my hesitation lies. <laughs> I don't know if that was such a great idea. Um, on one hand, in the positive sense, it the fabric is gorgeous. I love how drapey this is. And I love how it preserved all the colors of the warp. Like you can really see the warp in this, all the striped colors. But it is 
almost com like completely the opposite of dense. It's almost too sparse, I think is what I'm trying to say. So like I can poke my finger through it easily. Like it's just not, it's definitely not a firm, a firmly woven fabric by any means. So I'm not really sure where to go from here. <laughs> I don't know if it's, if it's okay that it's so loosely woven that it almost like the integrity of the fabric is not very intact. Um, I just don't know. I don't, what I initially was going to do is give this as a gift. And so I just don't know if I want to do that now. I don't know if it's, I just don't know. I'm not really sure. This is, this is completely an experiment that I wanted to try. And so I didn't really have a whole lot of expectations going into this, but I don't really know what to expect when I weave so loosely, I guess. I'm not really sure. Um, I didn't want to use mohair as the warp. That just seemed really fiddly to me. I, it just didn't seem, I just didn't really want to do it. <laughs> it's too fuzzy. Um, I love using these colors as the warp. That was so pretty. Now, on the flip side of that, I have not wet blocked this yet. I've tied knots in the ends. I haven't even tied knots in the ends of this side yet, but I need to wet block this and, and wash it in order to see what the fabric is going to do because I don't know. The mohair is non-superwash and the warp is superwash. And so I think the mohair might shrink a little, full up, uh, get a little more fluffy. And then as far as the fringe on the ends, these I just knotted these into groups of seven, I think, because I did, let's see, I did 28 ends per color of this kit. And so there are six colors, I did 28 ends, and so I divided each color into seven, <laughs> which leaves me with four fringes per color. <laughs> but I don't know if I'm gonna finish it with the fringe, just a loose fringe like this. I think I will because it just adds to the, the kind of the drapiness. I did try a twisted fringe like this and I just, I really didn't like how heavy it was and it kind of weighed down the fabric. I didn't really like that. I did not hem stitch it at all. What I did is I, for several rows, maybe six rows or so, I actually beat very firmly the mohair and so it almost added like a denser line. I don't know, I'm probably messing up all the weaving terminology, but I haven't even been weaving a year, so, <laughs> so you'll have to bear with me. So that is it for the weaving update. I will wash this and I'll keep you updated. I am going to finish it. I'm not going to completely abandon it. So I think what I'll do before I set it aside <laughs> out of frustration, I will wash it and, you know, not the ends and wash it and probably trim the fringe and finish it adequately enough and, um, yeah, just see how, see how it goes from there. So for me personally, I could wear something like this and be fine. Um, I just don't wanna give someone a gift that isn't great personally, I guess. So this is really, really pretty though. I think this would be so pretty in the fall and winter. I think this would be gorgeous with black or gray. So even forest green, that would be so pretty. Navy. So that's the weaving project. <laughs> Other than that, that is all I've been working on this week. I did purchase some 8-2 cotton for my loom. And I'm so excited because that's what I'm going to weave some dish towels from. 
I'm so excited to try it out. That is one of the main reasons I purchased a loom in the first place. I purchased a little 10 inch loom to learn how to weave and I thought that I really do think that was one of the best things I did. I think I did that last July and it just, it really helped me learn how to manage a loom and manage the warping before I tackled a really large loom. And so now I have a 32 inch Kromsky harp loom and it's a rigid heddle loom. So it still is small and relatively more manageable than a floor loom. And I really, really like it. And so, um, yeah, I'm gonna tackle towels, dish towels on that. So I'm really excited to try that out. I'm also, in the next few days, I'm going to try to film another sock knitting video. And so keep your eye out for that. It'll probably be a while before I get it edited and put up, but uh, many of you loved the last one I put up. Um, I'll link it below. It's how I knit my socks. It's pretty simple, but I thought it was time for another update. So I may tackle that in the next few days as well. This afternoon, I plan on making some lemon bars because I think I mentioned in my newsletter last week that I was craving lemon bars after my glow club this past month. Um, it was the lemon blossom and those candles were amazing and made me crave lemon bars so badly. So <laughs> finally going to make the lemon bars. I did wanna mention a couple very, very brief things about the shop. First of all, I did add a DK option to my mini mystery club. So if you're into DK weight mini skeins, I did add that option to my club. So I've linked it below in the clubs and it's just a really fun way to add some DK weight options to your projects. I've been waiting to get that yarn for a while and so I was so excited to finally add that to the listing. And then also for those of you who might be new and there, there are many people new to my club. So first of all, thank you so much for uh, purchasing the clubs and signing up for a subscription. They are so fun. I love creating them for you. But do know that anything that you purchase with those clubs will be shipped with the clubs. And so any items that you actually purchase during the month of March, they will be shipped on that April date. And so um, some of you really like it that way. <laughs> um, many of you are yarn aficionados, which I love, and you don't mind getting a package in the mail by April 10th. You don't want multiple packages in a month. You like to shave on, save on shipping costs and save on shipping, you know, packing supplies. And I completely understand that. And so just a heads up that anything purchased with clubs will be shipped with clubs. If you want it shipped more quickly because the clubs are a pre-order, um, just go ahead and purchase any in-stock items separately from your clubs and then I will ship those right away. That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, I'd love if you'd give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will be back next week with another episode. Until then, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.